of audiovisual translation as a discipline. Audiovisual translation is regarded as a subgroup within translation as well as an independent discipline on its own, own right. For one thing, audiovisual translation is a vast discipline. Although uh, audiovisual translation is popularly associated with subtitling and dubbing in cinema, films are actually only a small part of the variety of audiovisual programs produced in many cultures. Sintas opts for the autonomy of audiovisual translation, claiming that it is not a variant of literary translation, but a category of its own. Besides films, audiovisual translation engages a number of other forms like sitcoms or situational comedies, uh, cartoons, documentaries, corporate videos, commercials, uh, commercial uh, programs, educational and entertainment productions, video games, cooking programs, and of course, docudramas. Audiovisual translation has thus become more flexible, capable of dealing with a wide variety of audiovisual texts. The terminology for referring to the discipline also comes up for discussion. While film translation or cinema translation are uh, terms which are too narrow in their reach, screen translation is perhaps more acceptable. Ultimately, it appears that the term audiovisual translation has come to stay. Sindus also notes that in spite of its apparent autonomy, audiovisual translation is by nature interdisciplinary, involving both linguistic and audiovisual elements. The ever-increasing presence of audiovisual media in contemporary society has ensured its high visibility. Here, a point that is worth considering is that because of its huge culture industry, the overwhelming majority of audiovisual texts produced in the world are, in fact, in the United States of America. The direction of audiovisual translation is generally mostly from English into other languages. The implications of cultural influence is thus unmistakable. In a way, one can think of this as the perpetration of the, of the asymmetrical relationship between hegemonic cultures and marginalized cultures, a phenomenon discussed by the American translation scholar Lawrence Venuti in the context of the binary of domesticating and foreignizing translations. The orientation of studies on audiovisual translation is also changing. In the past, audiovisual translation was looked at mainly from a professional point of view. Studies and research focused mainly on the mechanics of audiovisual translation, such as time and space constraints, lip synchronization, spotting or queuing of subtitles, etc. Issues which would bother the technicians more than the translators. But the topics for study and research are widening in scope, departing from the technical and the purely linguistic. There have been uh, updates from both translation studies and culture studies, cultural studies, especially from the works of translation scholars like Andre Lefebvre and Susan Bassnett, which have increased awareness about the embedding of culture in translation. As in translation studies, there has been a cultural turn in audiovisual translation too. Recently, studies on audiovisual translation have looked at how the language used in translation, translating dialogues affects or is affected by social constructs on race, class and gender. Some of these Studies have also looked at the effects of censorship and the manipulation and control of meaning by various institutions in the process of audiovisual translation. The translator's task becomes tricky when dealing with the re-representation through translation of identities and stereotypes. 
there is a risk of not rendering precisely the location and dislocation of identity in the source language in literary translation or in other areas closely related to audio visual translation like remakes of films uh, the translators resort to strategies like geographical relocation in order to bridge the cultural gap in such cases the original and translation uh, remake or rewriting may diverge considerably from the original retaining only a certain amount of intertextual relations with the original this is not possible in conventional forms of audiovisual translation because the original text lives on through the images as in dubbing and voice over and through both images and sounds in subtitling translating only the linguistic content of the text without taking into account the other semiotic dimensions of the text will make the target text hazy or mutilated the project titled translation in global news undertaken by the university of warwick in britain is investigating the multifaceted nature of global news as well as the politics and economics of translation in the global media the author has a word of caution to add about audiovisual media here audiovisual media uh, especially cinema not just mirror reality and disseminate information they also distort reality and indulge in uh, misinformation it is now widely accepted that popular misinterpretations stereotypes and manipulated views about social categories like women and social linguistic religious and sexual minorities are primarily conveyed through audiovisual medium dubbing voice over and subtitling enable such views to be made accessible to wider audiences unfamiliar with the language of the original production culture cultural identity and the pragmatic functioning of dialogues are crucial in audiovisual texts the translation of dialects humor or taboo language for example can uh, pose serious problems for the translator the role of english as the dominant language in audiovisual production also impacts on audiovisual translation due to the presence of studios and personnel in predominantly english speaking locales english is not only the predominant language of translation but also the predominant interlanguage in audiovisual translation what this means is that in translation between two non english languages english functions as the intermediary language the source language elements are first translated into english and then translated into the target language this intermediary status of english certainly has significant cultural consequences these intermediary databases created are known in audio in the audiovisual industry variously as templates master titles or genesis files it's also noticed that the jargon used in audiovisual productions is largely colonial in orientation indifferent to any notion of political correctness about gender or ethnicity technologically audiovisual productions have changed beyond recognition the potential offered by digital technology is colossal for the production and consumption of audiovisual texts new formulas like dvd blu-ray and the internet have given viewers an unusual degree of control and choice in watching the productions multiple subtitling using srt files allows subtitles in several languages to be attached to the audiovisual text out of which the viewer can make a choice the viewers are now not passive receivers they have become interactive subjects the popularization of audiovisual translations has led to the creation of a number of amateur organizations devoted to making interventions in the field although the author is not aware of it amateur audiovisual translators in kerala have found it great fun 
to do such things like superimposing a dialogue sequence from a popular Malayalam film on a video of Western origin or to superimposing a dialogue scripted in a regional dialect of Malayalam on a sequence from a Charlie Chaplin film. These freaky productions are becoming viral on popular sites like YouTube. Uh, digital subtitling programs which can be accessed by audiovisual translators like Subtitle Workshop, Media Subtitler and Virtual Dub are freely available on the internet. Although the crucial issues in subtitling and dubbing have become more complex, the, the, uh, the, the issues which are uh, connected to the uh, role of culture in audiovisual translation, uh, these technologies have become relatively uh, easy to access. Practices like fan subbing, for example, the popular practice of distributing freely on the internet, subtitles created by amateurs, which, have, uh, which are generally more creative and idiosyncratic than traditional subtitles, has made the practice more democratic and free from the pressures of the market. The work of these amateur subtitlers and the conventions they have created are yet to be seriously subjected to critical scrutiny. But some of these innovations, like the use of translator's notes on the screen, have already made an impact on audiovisual translation. They have already appeared in films and other audiovisual texts which are basically commercial in nature. These new practices are challenging the established modes and practices in the audiovisual media. As the power of the consumer increases, uh, the popularity of this, these alternate practices are likely to get increasing scholarly attention in the coming years. In conclusion, the author draws attention to the fact that although the vast potential of audiovisual translation from a pedagogical perspective uh, has become clear, much of the research uh, has been professional or practical in nature. Very little research has gone into the theoretical aspects of training audiovisual translators, especially in evolving distinct translation strategies uh, in particular audiovisual modes. The value of audiovisual translation has spilled over from entertainment or dissemination of information into other areas like foreign language learning teaching. In fact, the European Commission has funded a project titled Learning via Subtitling, which aims at developing educational material for foreign language learning based on film subtitling. The project aims to compensate for the absence of real-life situations for language learning through the production of simulations of real-life activities. The use of subtitles, both interlingual and intralingual, as a tool in the teaching and learning of foreign languages has been uh, discussed by many scholars in the area. But uh, much more requires to be done. Although there have been successful literary projects like Book Box, which resorts to same language subtitling of audiovisual programs to enhance children's reading experience. The role of audiovisual translation in language learning acquisition is still largely unexplored.